This also reminds us of the joy that the world had when Jesus came into this world. So with the same joy, let us remember our shortcomings and failures that we may worthily partake in this Holy Eucharistic celebration. I confess to Almighty God and to my brothers and sisters that I have great in my thoughts and in my words what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's nativity, enable us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to announce a year of favor from the Lord and, day, and a day of vindication by our Lord. I rejoice heartily in the Lord, in my God, is the joy of my soul. For he has clothed me with the robe of salvation and wrapped me in a mantle of justice. Like a bridegroom adored with a diadem and a bride beckoned with her jewels, as the earth brings forth its plants and a garden makes its growth spring up, so will the Lord God make justice and praise spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. My soul proclaims, or my soul rejoices in my God. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked upon his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. My soul rejoices in my God. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him, in every generation. My soul rejoices, my God. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of, this, of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy. My soul rejoices, my God. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In all circumstances, give thanks. For this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophetic utterances. Test everything, retain what is good, refrain from every kind of evil. May the God of peace make you perfectly holy, and may you entirely 
spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will also accomplish it. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. A man named John was sent from God. He came for testimony, to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He was not that light, but came to testify to the light. And this is the testimony of John. When the Jews from Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to him to ask him, Who are you? He admitted and did not deny it, but admitted, I am not the Christ. So they asked him, What are you then? Are you Elijah? And he said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. So they said to him, Who are you? So that we can give answer to those who sent us. What do you have to say for yourself? He said, I am the voice of the one crying out in the desert. Make straight the way of the Lord, as Isaiah the prophet said. Some Pharisees were also sent. They asked him, Why then do you baptize if you are not the Christ or Elijah or the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water, but there is one among you whom you do not recognize, the one who is coming after me whose sandal strap I am not worthy to untie. This happened in Bethany across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. Welcome back once again to the third Sunday of the Advent. The central theme of today's liturgy is all about joy, rejoicing. We at all, the church, amidst the season of penance, a season where you and I need to prepare ourselves to receive the Lord into our hearts into our homes, into our lives, ask us to rejoice. First of all, you have came to the mid of your journey. That's, we just passed two weeks of Advent, just two more weeks left ahead. Then the entrance antiphon of today's liturgy in Latin would go, Gaudete ni Domino Semper. Rejoice in the Lord always. You know, so the church, in a way, asks us to rejoice. You know, all this season of Advent, we hear a lot from the book of prophet Isaiah. The prophecies that are in the prophet Isaiah are centered on hope, joy, and rejoicing. Because the people were waiting for the Messiah for so many 
centuries. You know, they were looking for Christ the Savior. And prophet Isaiah tells them that he was coming into the world. The people who lived in darkness, they just wanted to come into the light. The day of incarnation, the moment in which Jesus came to this world that changed everything forever because the Lord has come into the world. The Lord has come to save us. Maybe think about the pre-Messianic people or the pre-Christian people who were living in darkness, looking for the light. Then when Jesus came into this world, how heaven and earth rejoiced at the birth of Jesus. So, as we wait to celebrate the joyful feast of Christmas, we need such rejoicing in preparing ourselves. Maybe that's the reason tomorrow at 7 p.m. we have the reconciliation service in St. Anthony's. You know, that is also a part of preparation to live our sinful ways and become part of the light. You know, the gospel of today, we have very many questions. The first question that I'm going to ask you, what makes you joy? What gives you joy in your life? I'm not going, you know, I'm not waiting for any answers because most of the time <laughs> I ask any questions, you know, I don't get any answers. You know, that's cool. Because if everyone gives answer, then I may not have very much time. Maybe you are not used to it. Maybe what gives you happiness? Maybe a beautiful home? Or an expensive car? A very good relationship? What gives you joy in your life? What gives you fulfillment in your life? Maybe at the point of the death, when you look back and see the path that you have been traveling through, how will you feel? Will you feel that you are satisfied? You know, you have done your job, now you are ready to go. Like St. Paul would say, I have ran my race, and the crown of glory awaits for me in heaven. I am ready to live. You know, are we able to say such things in our daily life? Maybe when I was a second grader in a religious year, one of the nuns, you know, who was in charge of our class asked me, what gives you joy, Anthony? As a little kid, I may say, maybe if you buy and give me candies, cookies, I will be happy, you know? Maybe that may be the easy answer. Then she gave us the triangle of joy, you know, J-O-Y. She said, Jesus, others, and you make one joy. You know, a life without Jesus is meaningless. A life without others is meaningless. Because when God created, you know, when you read the creation story, for six days, you know, for the five days, all that he created, and he saw it was good. But at the end, he found some emptiness in the creation. Then he said, I'm going to make man in my own image and likeness. Then after that, he found the man was alone. He was not happy. Then he created the woman. There he found satisfaction, fulfillment in his work of creation. You know, that's joy. Maybe you, with God, the creation, and the people around you, makes one feel fulfillment, that gives one joy. So life without others is chaos, meaningless. You may have good and bad people in your life, but still, you need them to learn lessons, 
to strive for perfection. Maybe in a class, only one student studies, you know? Is there any competition? Will that make any sense, you know? Whether he gets zero or hundred out of hundred, he's the only one, you know? That will not give him any good exposure to become a better student than you. You are very much important. You are very special. That's what we find in the first reading of today and the second reading. The first reading, Prophet Isaiah speaks about, first of all, he gives the hope to the people of uh, the people who lived in despair, saying that the Messiah is going to come. Then when he comes, he is going to have these are the elements of his life, the qualities of the Messiah. Then the second reading, St. Paul tells, give thanks to the Lord for all that good and bad that happens in your life. You know, always remain steadfast in his love. That is very much important. The gospel, we have very many questions. First of all, John the Baptist was in the river Jordan baptizing. Then the people ask him, who are you? What is the purpose of your life? Why are you here? So there were very many questions. I remember this happened in Tanzania. One day, I had a call. You know, I was with one of my workers in the field. You know, it's not nearby the house. I bought a piece of land, maybe like 10 miles away from a rectory. So I just went to look at the place. Then I got a call from a government office saying that tomorrow we need you in our office. So it takes eight hours to travel from my place to get to the office, to the main city. If I go home and take all that I need, my clothing, enough money to travel, I'm not going to make it. So I told my worker, go home, tell the other priest to send money to my mobile. You know, phone pay, I am traveling. I was with my sports dress, so I just got into the bus. I told the, you know, person in charge, when I get down, I'm going to pay the money for my travel. So there is a priest waiting for me. Then I called the priest in the town. I said, you know, it's very emergency. I am on a travel. I don't have anything. I did not bring enough clothing, no soap, anything that I need. And I don't have money even in my hand. You know, the priest, they did all the preparation. They went to the shop, they picked enough clothing, all that they need, but they do not know the soap that, that, that which I use for a bathing. So as when I got down, I took the money, gave to the driver of the bus, I said goodbye and I thanked him. Then he said, okay, come, let us go to the grocery store and pick your soap. And that soap is only available in Indian stores. You know, you cannot find anywhere. It's a product of India. So I just went to the store to buy one single soap. So I did not take anything with me, you know. I just maybe took $10 from the priest and walked into the store and found a lot of good deals. You know, all the fresh Indian spices and snacks. That really was amazing. And I had my credit card with me. So I just called the neighboring community, you know, Indian communities, and I said, you know, I came to the store here, I found a lot of good deals. Then they just said, okay, I need this, this, this. Then I started picking, you know, a lot of stuff. And I just went in to buy a soap, then I came across a big deal of things. Then I bought, then when I came out, the priest who was waiting in the car was just shocked. You know, he did not say anything. Then he asked, what happened? Then he said, then I said, you know, there was a good deal of things. So I bought all these. Well, you know, we started going home. I was very happy about the good deal that I got. 
When I went home, I remembered I did not pick the soap. You know, most of the time that happens to me even here. You know, what if at all I got a good deal of things, but I did not get what I wanted? You know, that is very much important. You know, the gospel, we read, a man named John was sent from God. He came for testimony to testify to that light so that all might believe through him. Then that goes on. The Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 6 onwards. John knew from the beginning to end for what he came to this earth. He was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. He knew the purpose. Then he knew who he was. He had very many deals. He never let his mind go astray. He kept going, bearing truth, you know, witness to the truth. He just pointed out to Jesus and said, here is the Lamb of God who is going to take away the sins of the world. That was his job. He completed happily. He went back. So, why are we here? Who we are? What is the purpose of my life here? You know, that is the question that you and I need to ask. You know, the life of John the Baptist was very interesting. You know, his mom was a barren for many years. Then the angel appeared, telling her that she is going to conceive. Then his father, Zachariah, lost speech due to his unbelief. Then he regained when he named him as John. The whole town was in wonder. What sort of child this is going to be? You know? So, I believe Elizabeth many times might have told to John about the story, the birth story of him. Then she might have told him many times, you are special. You know, you are God's creation. You are a gift of God. You know, I don't know how many of your parents told that to you and your birth stories. Maybe one or two occasions I might have shared my own story. I am the fruit of nine years of prayers. Not one day or one year or two years. My parents prayed for a boy child for nine years when I was born. You know, when my mom tells me, you know, you are not a simple person. You are God's own gift to us. So we are going to give you as gift to God. You know, you are special. When they say such things to you, how do you feel? You know, then you automatically look for the purpose of your life. Why at all God has created me? And he has sent me to this earth, to this community of St. Anthony's. Maybe what is his plan for me? You know, you and I, dear brothers and sisters, need to ask. You know, God has created and has given us all that we need. As you travel your life, the, the journey of your life, you meet a lot of deals. For example, you know, the husbands, maybe look at your wives. You know, when you see a wonderful wife, beautiful, very calm. Is it not a good deal? The Bible says, if someone who has a calm wife is a blessing. Maybe wives, when you have a caring and understanding husband, is it not a good deal? Is it not a blessing? It is not only a blessing, but it is also a miracle. You know? So that's what you and I are called. You know, first of all, the gospel of today, we hear, just give me three more minutes. The gospel we hear, the main purpose of John was to testify to the truth. We are here to testify to a heavenly father. That is 
the important purpose that we find when you read the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 22, verses 15, it says, You will be my witness to all the world of what you have seen and heard. Again, the, the book of Acts chapter 1, verses 8 will say, You will receive the power when the Holy Spirit come upon you. You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. This Jesus told to the disciples multiple times. You know, that was their purpose. You know, their pur purpose was not to become somebody great. You know, the 12 disciples, their aim, you know, the purpose of their life was to bear witness. As we, disciples of Christ, we all need to bear witness to our Heavenly Father who has brought us to this wonderful world. It's not to look for good deals, but rather look to present our life as witness to God. The gospel, the first question that was raised to John the Baptist was, who are you? If I ask you today, who are you? What will be your answer? St. Peter tells in his first letter, chapter 2, verses 9, he says, you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, holy nation, God's own people. In order that you might proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into the marvelous light. So maybe now you know who you are, why God has sent you here on this earth. So dear brothers and sisters, as we prepare ourselves to welcome or to participate in the joyful celebration of the Christmas, let's ask Jesus to open the eyes of our hearts, our mind, and let Jesus shower his choices, blessings upon each and every one of us, that we may know the purpose for which we are here on this earth. And let us try to do the will of God, that we may accomplish all that he has given for us. Let the name of Jesus be praised forever. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Dear brothers and sisters, with rejoicing hearts full of faith, we pray without ceasing. For all the retired priests and religious of the Catholic Church, that they may be provided what they need to thrive after faithfully serving the people of the church with care and self-sacrifice, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who live in the Holy Land, the birthplace of our faith, that they may be kept safe from harm, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. On this third Sunday of Advent, let us rejoice and prepare our hearts for the joy of Christ's arrival in our lives. 
and that we might bring God's grace to our loved ones who may not yet be ready to receive him. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For those who are distressed about the upcoming holidays, that they may join with others in establishing new joyful memories, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For those in our parish who feel their faith is being tested, that they may find abiding hope in the Advent scriptures, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and suffering of our parish community and families, we pray especially for Roger Bouchain, Chuck Moorhead, Elise Torbenson, Linda Sorby, sister of Ross de Saltel, Harold Lair, father of Krista Lair, Al Baumgartner, and those on our prayer chain, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Minnie Garcia, Betty Sheely, Amanda Cassette, daughter of Steve and Teresa Cassette, and for George and Betty Widman, for whom this Mass is being said, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. O God, you have done great things for us. Strengthen us as we follow John the Baptist's call to change our lives. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Pray, dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord, may the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right and just. It is a truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfill the design you formed long ago and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he came, comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so, with angels and archangels, with the thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim, Holy holy holy, 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 holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like that you fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, John our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be coherence of eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, Formed by the divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Holy and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Let only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body made of Christ be saved for eternal life. and 
Parting clouds reveal his wonder, mighty king in victory. Trembling earth and rolling thunder, blazing sun and quaking sea. Now he comes, our king in glory, saints rejoice and On us now the sun is shining, lifting us to his embrace. Shame is cursed, no more confounding. Lift your head and know his face. Love incarnate, breath indwelling, now in truth is truth made. Let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feast. Through Christ our Lord. A few announcements today. Our parish penance service is this Monday, tomorrow, December 14th at 7 p.m. Please take time to join us and make the most of this Advent season free from the burden of sin. Our Knights in Columbus Council is holding a coloring contest. Kids, you can pick up coloring sheets today from the table in the St. Francis Gathering Place. Prizes will be awarded for those uh, different age groups. Entries must be turned into the parish office by Monday, January 25th. There are many ways that you can help others during this season of giving. Some ideas here at St. Anthony's include donating new winter gear to the mitten tree, picking an angel off the tree to help a family in need, or donating gift cards and books for the Women's Care Center. Let us open our hearts to our neighbors in need. Bow down for the blessing. Uh, before that, I have a small announcement. In our sacristy, we have one traveling chalice left. If anybody or any family wants to pray for occasion, wanted a blessing of God in this season of Advent, please make use of it. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the Almighty and merciful God by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of his only begotten Son, and yearn for his coming again. Sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent, and enrich you with his blessings. Amen. Amen. As you run the race of this present life, may he make you firm in faith, joyful in hope, and active in charity. Amen. So that rejoicing now with devotion at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when he comes again in majesty. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Saint Michael, Michael the, the Archangel, Archangel, defend us in battle. 
be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the other evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.